Hi everyone. In this video, let's discuss how do we handle stale element reference exception. So we'll discuss when do we get the stale element reference exception and how to handle the stale element reference exception. And we'll also understand what is the meaning of this stale element reference exception in this video. And we'll also see the various types to handle this element reference exceptions. So all these things we'll discuss in this video. First, let me explain you one scenario and let's start writing the program. I've launched the browser. I've entered the URL of some live.skillery.com testing application. Here, my scenario tells us after launching the browser, I just wanted to click on this feedback button. Once after clicking on this feedback button, I am to click on this download invoice. After clicking on this download invoice, I have to just go back and again, I have to click on this feedback in order to download this invoice again. So I have to come here, I have to click on this feedback, click on this download invoice. Again, I need to go back. Again, I have to click on feedback and I have to click on download invoice. So this is a scenario. Let's start writing the code for the scenario and see what is the output of this program. I'm launching the Eclipse here. Let me create one class and here I'm just specifying the name of the package demo and here I'll just tell it as some reference name. I'll just give it a sample. Select the main method. I'm clicking on finish. So first thing I need to set the path of my driver executables but by using a system.set property method. So I have, I have set the path of the driver executable. Now I need to launch the browser. Let me write web driver driver is equals to new chrome driver off. Then I wanted to enter the URL of an application. Before this let me import this web driver and here I just write it as driver.get method have to enter the URL of the application. Let me copy the URL of this application and I'm just pasting over here. So once after launching this application, I just wanted to click on feedback. So in order to click on feedback, I have to inspect this feedback. Let me right click and click on inspect. So here I can go use it by xpath by text function, double forward slash a text function value of the text function is feedback. I just wanted to click on this feedback driver dot find element by using xpath expression copy paste the value. So before I perform an action, I just store this address into one reference variable. Let me store it into one reference variable and call it as ELE. The return type of find element is web element. So after that, I just wanted to perform the operation that is click. Once after I click on here, I have to download this invoice. So let me inspect this download invoice. Here there's an option called as with a name called download invoice. Let me copy this. I'll just write it as driver dot find element by using a name locator. And here I have to perform an action dot as dot click. So once after clicking on this download invoice, I have to go back. To this and again I have to click on feedback so driver dot navigate dot back so I'm coming back I'm just again the address of that element is already stored in this ELE I'll just take this ELE and I'll just perform the action called as click let me execute the script so this is launching the Chrome browser it is entering the URL of an application it is clicking on feedback, it has downloaded the invoice, it has come back. But now again it is not clicking on what? Feedback. Okay, my execution has been stopped. Let me see. I got an exception. So what is that exception I'm getting? I'm getting an exception that is what? Steel element reference exception. First, let's understand what is the meaning of this stale element reference exception. Now, let's also look into where exactly we are getting this exception. The exception we are getting at the line number 18. That is, 
once after we go back and we are trying to perform an action on the same element that is ele dot click i'm getting a exception now let me explain you what is the meaning of that exception and how it, what is the reason for that occurrence of that exception so let me explain you this code what exactly we are doing we are launching the browser after launching the browser we are finding the address of that feedback and we are storing this address into the reference variable called as ele now the ele will be containing the address of this element after that we will perform the click action then later again we are going to find the address of this element and we are going to perform click after that we are going to navigate back we are going to navigate the back and here when you try to click on the same address of that element we are going to get an exception called as stale element reference exception we will be facing so what is the exception we will be facing we will be facing this stale element reference exception first let's understand what is the meaning of stale element reference exception the reference the ele the reference where address of that element is stored the reference of the element has become old the meaning of the stale is nothing but old or we can also call it as expired the where the address of an element the reference of that element has become old or expired that is the reason we are going to get this exception called the stale element reference exception so you guys understood what is the meaning of stale element reference exception now let's see how do we handle this so we can handle this by using simple try catch block so we we can write the risky statements in the try block and we can handle it in the catch so now let's see how do we handle this by using try catch it's the first type to handle this stale element reference exception let me launch this now this is a risky statement where i'm going to put this risky statement in the try block later i'm going to catch that exception that exception whatever i've got let me copy that ex exception and i'll paste it over here which i'm going to handle that is stale element reference exception and here with the reference variable i'll just tell it as handled i have to import the stale element reference exception now let me execute the script now if you look into the code the exception has been handled but this is a one way of giving the solution second way without using this try catch block okay let me also tell you let me remove this try catch block and here you understood what's the meaning of stale element reference exception because the reference of that element is becoming old or expired that is the reason you are getting this exception now i will initialize or i will write the address of an element freshly so i will not use the same address okay i'll use this the address of this element again after going back when it comes here i am just using this exception i am just writing the same thing again with one more reference variable so i'm initializing with a new address i'm writing one second with a new address now let me execute this program so this is opening the browser entering the url of the application so again it is going back again the fresh address of the element and you're able to handle this exception but the thing is what exactly is happening here if you look into this code there is a repetition of the code so whenever we write the program okay there should not be a repetition of the code so we have to always make use of reusable methods so for this we go with a concept called as page object model so what is the use of this page object model is so first of all you guys have understood 
How do we handle this tail element reference exception by using try catch block? Now let's understand how are we going to handle this using POM. In POM, we have three stages. One is declaration, initialization, and utilization. In declaring, we use this annotation find by. So annotation find by indirectly it is calling the find element method. And in a page factory class, there is a method called as init elements. So which is used to initialize the new addresses. So there is one more way that is by using the POM. So why do basically we use this POM concept? POM concept in order to make the reusable methods instead of avoid the repetition of the code in order to write it in a structured way. We use this POM concept. Now let's see how do I write the same program by using a POM structure and avoid the repetition of the code. In order to write this POM structure, let me create one class new let me create one class let me specify the name of the class itself as pom and click on finish so i have to declare an element by using annotation find by so i can just take it from here itself that is by using xpath by using the concept called xpath copy paste the value and i have to just write it as private web element and the name of the component is it is feedback button so later i just wanted to click on the invoice as well before this i need to import this annotation find by now let me go and declare the element that is for downloading that is by using a name locator i'm copying it from here itself and let me write it as annotation find by using a name locator copy paste the value so here I'll just write it as private web element and the name of this is I'll just write it as download button. Now here after doing this I need to initialize this by initializing and use a constructor. Always the constructor should be name same name as a class name web driver driver. So here I'm going to initialize the page factory class. Page factory dot init elements. I'm going to initialize the elements. So current project that is which page this that is indicates the current project. Now here I'm just going to create a method public void. One method I'm going to create for the feedback. feedback button here I'm just going to perform an action that is click and similarly to this I just wanted to create one more method for this download invoice is the name of the method and here I just wanted to click on this download as well so click as download so what is the use of writing in this is we can reuse the methods. So don't need to write the repetition of the code as what we have done here. So same thing we are repeated for two twice. Okay. So what I'm going to do is here I'm just commenting this lines of the code. And let me go back here. Instead of writing this two lines of the code, I'll just create a object for the class called page object. POM P is equals to new POM that is a class what we have created so once after creating this I'm just going to call the methods P dot so first one I have to click on feedback later I have to click on download later once after I go back it is not I'm just I need to just call this by using feedback and I'll just call it by using download so here what is happening by using this form structure I'm just calling it n number of times. Now if I execute this program. So this is launching the browser. Enters the URL of Skillery application. It is clicking on download. Again it is going back. Again it is downloading again. If you look here. So there are two feedbacks or a two invoices which is got downloaded. So this is by writing also. We are writing this in a structured way using the form design pattern.
I hope you guys understood how do we handle the stale element reference exception, what is stale element reference exception, how are we going to handle by using a try catch block and also how do we reuse the methods by using a prompt design pattern and we also understood the complete meaning of stale element reference exception, when do we get it, how do we handle it. Log in now to access all the courses designed by the experts of Skillrary. If you like this video, subscribe to Skillrary YouTube channel and click here to watch the similar videos. Thank you.